How to Overcome Temptation, Part 136. Envy is the sin tonight in the Onward Christian Soldiers Discipleship Class, number 260. Let's stand for the reading of God's Holy Word. I'm going to read the foundational passage, and then I'm going to read a verse that many of you may not even uh, know too much about, but it's in the Word of God, it's in the Bible, and it is striking when you look at it. Our foundational verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. If you don't know this by heart, and if you are a Christian, you need to hide this verse in your heart. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not Let's go ahead and read this moment. But God Sorry about that one of our Facebook cameras <coughs> our Facebook uh, I think our third Facebook platform camera. There have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. And then I want you to turn to Proverbs 27 verse 4. Pay close attention to this passage. I've read it many times. but I've never seen it like this before. Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ We praise you and we thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love, your long-suffering, your loving kindness, <clears throat> and your patience. And we also thank you for your chastising hand, your chastening hand upon us. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for allowing us to be in this unusual situation, a situation that this world that we live in today, especially uh, people in the church in America and people in America never 
saw coming. They did not take heed to your warnings. And now, Holy Father God, they're told by the President of the United States to run and hide in the house. As one president said, we're fighting against an invisible enemy. We have never seen this in our lifetime. This is unprecedented. But Holy Father God, my prayer, because I'm on your side, by your grace, is that you'll be thorough with us be thorough with us all however long it takes Lord for judgment to do his work in the hearts and lives of your people in the church however long it takes to stop pastors for stop pastors from having <coughs> several girlfriends in the church even though they're married to their wife. However long it takes for pastor's wives who have a boyfriend or two as well, so-called first ladies. Lord, however long it takes for ministers and pastors and prophets and evangelists and teachers to cease having sex with girls and boys and homosexuals in the church promoting homosexual in the church however long it takes for churches such as the Methodist Church to get back to the foundations of John Wesley and Charles Wesley who never thought that a church named after their great movement would ever even consider splitting over the abomination of homosexuality. However long it takes, Lord, be thorough with us be thorough with us. Weed out those who are in the church who are lost and on their way to hell and who are tearing up churches as imposters and help them, Lord, to come to know your Savior, preferably. And Holy Father God, we pray that preachers would get back to praying and preaching the gospel, preaching your holy word. Holy Father God, I believe that you shut down the churches as well because most churches were not doing what you told them to do in the first place. And now they can't even go in their buildings to have services because they were just playing and not praying when you made it very clear to all of us that my house should be called the house of prayer. about entertainment, about making money, about making business deals, about celebrity, about the prosperity false gospel, about lying and whoring around and whoredom and whoremongering. It's about divorce care, which is nothing but a glorified dating system. Lord, uh, and you are displeased with the hypocrisy, the phoniness, the coming into buildings and raising their dirty hands to you, talking about how much they love you, and yet they don't obey you. And we have made it very clear why I call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, Holy Father God, I hope that everybody will, who names the name of Christ will confess their sins. 
and repent of their sins, including the sin of envy. Jealousy for people will find out tonight that a lot of things going on in the church are driven by this evil sin. But Lord, you know better than I, but as I read Amos, the Old Testament prophet, Lord, I see the same thing he saw in the people of God today. They're not in the mood of, for repenting. And so, Lord, I pray humbly that you be thorough with us and do whatever you need to do. Lord, uh, chastise us. You may have to take some of us away with everybody else to get people's attention and Holy Father God this might be the final curtain call for America I don't know all I know is you told me to preach the gospel every day and to preach your holy word and to warn the people of all of the warnings that you sent their way all of the shootings all of the strange earthquakes five in one day and all of that all of the strange hurricanes and tornadoes and, uh, that people in, of the world are trying to blame on so-called uh, climate change when you're behind all everything and when we as Christians know Lord that in your holy word, you were the one responsible or that you allowed for such things to happen to disobedient people, your people. You gave Jezebel space to repent and she didn't take advantage of it. We have a bunch of Jezebels, Lord, in our church today. In churches today even at the White House and uh, here is uh, part of the reason why we're being destroyed today and weak men letting the Jezebel rule them and rule the church and rule even the White House and that's why we're in a mess today that's why the city that never sleeps is shut down tonight for the first time in its history like never before. And so Holy Father God, we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who will be by your grace focusing in on one sin, but Lord have your Holy Ghost to take it to deal with all of our sin. Help us, Lord, to confess our sins, pray, seek your face, turn from our wicked ways, and humble ourselves. The devil has been fighting all day. I thought he would kind of let up on me since uh, I finished preaching what I said I was going to do and what you led me to do. But uh, he's not letting up. And so I know there's somebody in the crowd tonight. We had nearly 3,000 tonight. Uh, 3,000 last night on all platforms uh, and and I'm sure it's that or more tonight and so I know there's somebody in the crowd who needs this message and there are thousands who need uh, the general message that we all need to confess our sins and repent Pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Save those who are lost and revive those who are saved. Glorify your holy name still. Lift up your holy son, Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray and for sake. Amen. <coughs>
ladies and gentlemen. Saint Cyprian said envy has no limit. He had the wisdom and the insight to tell us all that envy has no limit. Now, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I I, uh -uh, uh -uh. still right here, still right here. No, I, 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 I knew that envy was terrible, but I, even after forty years. Thank God it's really not been a sin of mine. But uh, envy is deeper than what many of us think. <coughs> it goes on and on, St. Cyprian said. A sin without end. The more successful the person we envy is the hotter the fire the fire of envy burns in us. Allow me to share that with you again. He said, envy has no limit. Now get that. He said, it goes on and on, a sin without end. The more successful the person we envy is, the hotter the fire of envy burns in us. This is very deep. This is, you will see, a very devilish sin. All sin is devilish, but this is deeper than what you know. And no doubt is one of the sins that has put us in our present predicament in the church. Now, I'm not dealing with the world. <laughs> the only thing I have to say to the world is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's all I got to say to the world. The problem is the church. I know that we have pastors who think the church is just fine because they're blinded by their own evil and sin and prosperity and comfort. By the way, there's always been a war between prophets and priests. Prophets are called upon to rebuke pastors and priests. It's been the case for years because pastors get they're too close to the sheep. They're more concerned about the sheep than they're concerned about God, whereas the prophet is more concerned about what God wants than what the sheep want. So there's always been this war. This is why you don't see uh, many churches have true bona fide called prophets and evangelists to visit their churches because you know why they'll tell you why they're afraid the prophet or the evangelist would tear their church up that's why they always invite their little
preacher friend, their little soft preacher friend who they play golf with, you know, and they swap love offerings and you know, make each other fatter. That's all. They don't have anything to do with a prophet, a true prophet, and a true evangelist. Because a true prophet, a true evangelist is going to make a beeline to the sin problem in the church. And to the sin of not doing what God told you to do, like praying, loving all people, and witnessing to all people. Whereas the pastor is going to preach a series, a wonderful series, on four points on four points of, on how to be happy. There is a legend from the early years of the church when a serious follower of Christ joined a community of monks to flee temptation. And this was pretty popular back in the day, back in the early days of the church. Not that popular today, even though some still do it. There are a few monasteries still around. Safe within the walls of the monastery, he would avoid temptations of sexuality, covetousness, greed, anger, wrath, etc. Yet one day he was told that his brother his brother had been made Bishop of Smyrna and the sin of envy sprang forth in full flower right there in the monastery. How you doing? Mm -hmm. you, oh yes, you might be able to avoid this sin and you're not bothered by this sin but let somebody do better than you or get more attention than you do about something or they're just flat more gifted than you are and things just come to them effortlessly and 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 folks and people are attracted to them more than they are you how, how are you doing with that i've said repeatedly over the past 10 years the mark of a mature christian is that they can be genuinely happy for all other Christians, no matter what they get to do and mean it, and are not bothered by it at all. But many Christians are not that way. But I want to show you briefly tonight how devilish, how demonic this sin is. By the way, you might have people in your family who envy you. You may have a spouse who envies you. What? Deep down. And that is the crux of your problems in your marriage. You would not think so. You would think your spouse is on your side, got your back. Well, but but deep down they may they don't they can't stand being in the background. They they can't stand seeing you get applauded and pat on the back and invited certain places and and and, and uh, you're so happy and so so joyful all the time and deep down seething with inside of them. You didn't even know it until you were married about 15, 20, 25, 30 years. They not only didn't like you that much, but they envied you. Now that's, see, envy is a different ball game. You got some parents who envy their children, their giftedness, uh, their flightiness, their, uh, their ability to attract uh, people to them, their, their, their gift of, 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 of gab, their gift of talking. They, 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 they're so different from them. Uh, you got, listen to me, you got mothers, and it's mostly mothers, but some fathers as well, 
who are envious of their children and they're constantly trying to control their children to be what they want them to be instead of what God wants them to be. We're not talking about sin. No, no. They're going. They're, they're taking a different route. Now, just hold up, hold up, just hold up a minute, Charlie. Do you remember when you left home and how that you were nothing like your father, sir? You had different interests. You wanted to do different things. You were you. You you hung around some other folks you like to do different things than your father even though y'all did some things together same thing with daughters do you know there's some mothers who are going to die and go to their grave because they're envious of their children and that she has a better marriage and the mom is divorced and remarried She's a true blue Christian. The mom was kind of halfway in and out. Go to church, you know, church membership, that's it. The daughter is so happy and joyful with her husband and she's raising her children. Guess what? Horror of horrors. She's raising her children 100% differently than the mama. Because the mama, the truth is mama didn't do a good job. And daddy didn't either. And by the way, beloved, what's wrong with the next generation being better than the previous generation? That's how it ought to be. What, what, what? What's the problem? What's up? You can't stand it. You want, you, you want them to be just as unhappy and miserable as you. You can't stand them. You can't stand how they travel all over the world and you've never been out of Podunk. It burns you up when they send you a postcard from London, from France, from Frankfurt, Germany. But see, you never even thought about leaving Podunk. Now you're envious of your child. You got people in your family. And see, that's why, beloved, in many cases, you need to get away from your family to become what God wants you to be. You got to do it. <laughs> oh, yes, I know it's comfortable being around mom and dad and all that, but you need to get away from them. In most cases. So that you can become what God wants you to be. And watch this. Be a blessing to them in another way instead of being around them all the time. The Bible knowledge commentary says about this passage, when a person is angry and furious and wrathful, he can become, he can be cruel toward others. His words and actions may cause others to cower in fear. But Envy is even worse because it may include anger, wrath, and fury, and merciless revenge. But here's, here's the kicker right here. Who can stand before envy is one of the few rhetorical questions in Proverbs. And the, and the deal is, envy can have all of that in it. Watch this, though. But envy will never end. It's, you know, a person can get angry and then, you know, it's all right. After a while, a person can uh, be upset about something and then you all can talk and work it out later. But see, when the person envies you, see, and let me help you. The reason why envy is so devilish, because it is the devil. Do you have people, listen to me, and some of y'all, there's some folk 
You don't need to see, you don't need to send an Instagram photo. Some of you don't need to send a Facebook post about all the little blessings. And some of you know it, but you do it anyway because you want the people to envy you. Now you, 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 you evil too. But now you, if you know you got, you have a friend or you have a family member and you know they envy you, they're not genuinely happy for you. Stop sending them Facebook posts and Instagrams causing them to burn with envy. Well, you won't be doing that much now anyway because uh, it's going to be kind of hard to send an Instagram post. Uh, and you, you're not uh, standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. Because you can't go to the Eiffel Tower tonight. There are people who envy you. And you know it. If you know it, don't, don't, don't provoke it. Don't push it. You're the devil too if you do that. Even social media companies are tapping all of that down because they know psychologically it's messing with people. People are committing suicide because they can't be as happy as you. What's so devilish about envy is that the person who envies you, he hates the fact or she hates the fact that you're happy. That you have joy. That you're being blessed. That your life is fruitful. They hate it. And they want to see that destroyed to the point, if necessary, in their minds, they'll kill you. Or they'll kill someone in your family that brings you so much joy. The person you brag about so much. Your husband is this. Your wife is this. Or they'll try to tear down that which makes you happy and, and, and joyful and uh, so effervescent and cheerful. Do you know there are people who hate you because of that? They hate you because you're cheerful all the time. You're joyful. You're the same all the time. You're not stormy. I get tickled with these people who name their children Stormy. What, 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 no, please don't give them that name. Storm, Storm, what? You don't need a storm, you don't need a storm, baby. Lord have mercy, don't name your child Storm. What do you want her to be? What do you, Stormy, no. What about cheerful, joyful? There are people, the devil hates it. While you're smiling and grinning and you're laughing and you're chill, the devil's like this. I'm going to wipe that grin off your face. I'm going to wipe that cheerfulness. I'm going to, I'm going to do something to your child. I'm going to do something to your husband, to your wife. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me? This verse warns us that the sin of envy is worse than than the sin of wrath and anger. What? I thought, I thought they were the worst, right up there with them. Anger and wrath lead to many cruel acts, but envy is a deep-seated sin that lies within the heart and mind of man far longer than a sudden outburst of rage. Deep down in her heart, she envies you. And it stays there. It never goes away. Deep down in his wicked heart, he envies you. See, you can avoid someone's anger. You can avoid uh, someone's rage. You can avoid someone's sudden wrath. You can avoid 
someone's sudden wrath and return when they have cooled off. But envy retains uh, the anger. You don't even see. Here's the problem with envy. It's not like anger and wrath. It's hidden down. They can be smiling at you. Oh, that's so nice, and they are hating your guts. See, this is what has happened even in the prosperity church. Because see, God never Jesus. He had no place to lay his head. He never intended for us to be all about money and material things. Because he knew it would be like that. People in the church envying you. Now they have a they have a Cadillac, a new Cadillac, but you went out and got a Mercedes. <coughs> you have a new Mercedes. Somebody else went out and got a Bentley. And and, and, and the envy goes on and on and on. They're preachers who envy preachers. So much so they'll try to get all close up with preachers who they envy. And like a Judas try to tear them down behind their back. Oh yeah, I used to eat, I eat lunch with him, he ain't about nothing. But envy retains its anger and adds more anger to it the longer the envied enjoys perceived prosperity and blessings on his or her life. I like what Dr. Charles Simeon said. He said this, and I want you to pay close attention. It is the happiness. Ah, have you ever been around folk like that? They can't stand your happiness. you got somebody in your family right there. God has blessed you. God has favored you. God has done some wonderful things for you. And you just keep on getting blessed. And you're joyful. You're cheerful. You're happy. They don't understand that you learned a long time ago because God chastised you a long time ago and made it very clear to you that God has never blessed disobedience and he never will. Never has, never will, even if you are a Christian in the New Testament, God does not operate that way. Jesus died for your sins. God forbid for you to think that you can continue in sin. What are you talking about? <laughs> and this, this is what many churches uh, give off. They don't say it directly, but they give people uh, the idea that they can live that way and that, 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 that's not the case my dearly beloved friends not at all see so you learn that way back yonder and you said what well, one preacher said I, I bet you I won't do that again because I fear God now and I like being blessed I do I, I love it. see with blessings from God there's certain freedoms that come with that certain privileges that come with it, favor that comes with all of that. God opens up doors for you. God works miracles for you. Uh, I love it. And because, not because of those blessings are we happy all the time and cheerful and joyful. Go to bed happy, wake up happy, sleep happy. What? But we're not happy because of the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Watch this. We're happy, beloved, and joyful and cheerful because we learned a long time ago that God does not play. Now, he'll give you space to repent, and you better take advantage of that space to repent. Or God will take you to the woodshed. And that's not where you want to go. Because you're going to be there a while. Every born again Christian who's hearing me tonight. They know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't have to explain it anymore. Because God does not play that. You're thinking very foolishly. If you think that because I'm a Christian I can do what I want. And, and go where I want. And, 
and be with who I want and be a homosexual and be an adulterer and an adulteress and get married and then divorced and get married and uh, when the Bible clearly tells you if you do that, you are an adulterer and an adulteress. But yet you want, you're just like the woman who is mean as hell, rebellious as hell, stubborn as the devil, but she wants all of the benefits and rewards of being married and a wife and a mother should have. And it doesn't work that way in God's economy. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. Don't tune me out. I'm trying to help you. If you're born again, you're with me all the way. You nod your head like this. You're doing it like this. You're nodding your head. You're saying, Amen, Amen. You may be saying it under your breath, but you know, oh me. Some of you are saying, oh me. What? See, it is the happiness of another that gives pain to the envious man, God help us, or woman. And the destruction of that happiness is the great object that would afford him a demonic pleasure. That's feeding. It's nothing. But it's something to him or her. They can't stand. See, listen, listen. Not only do they want to see your blessings go away, because they foolishly think it's about the blessings that make you happy. They want your happiness to go away. That's why they'll act childish and break something of yours. Because they think that that thing is, is what makes you happy. They'll try to get in between you and yours. Because they think that is, is, that's what makes you happy. No, no, it's not about that. It's your relationship with God through Jesus Christ that makes you happy. And you don't want to do anything to offend God. And that keeps you happy. Keeps you cheerful. Keeps you joyful. Uh, amen, somebody. And so, ladies and gentlemen, its actings indeed are not up open like those of wrath and anger. I told you, envy is hidden way deep down with the devil on the inside. On the contrary, they are as secret as possible. See, this is why you better discern the spirits. Everybody, listen to me, I'm trying to help you. Everybody in your family, everybody in your church, everybody on your job is not for you. They are, listen, listen to me very carefully. There are women in your church. They envy your happy marriage because they beat down their husband and ran him off for a temporary Bo Peep. And, and you, you know Bo Peep ain't nothing really. Bo Peep does not have a job. You'll never see Bo Peep in a suit in most cases. He's got some wide jeans on, a shirt, a leather jacket, hardly takes a bath, and just crazy over Bo Peep. And ran her good husband away for old nasty Bo Peep. And she has realized the error of her ways, and she's she comes back to church and she says, you still married to your husband? Y'all are still going on cruises? Can't go on cruises now, but back in the day. Y'all have date nights, and your children are acting right. She's envious of you. And behind your back, if you're not careful, that heifer, Excuse me, that's what they used to call him back in the day. That's what my mother and them called him. That heifer. I don't know what it is, but I know it's a word in the Bible. 
they was referring to an animal, but that the, that heifer should behind your back she'll try to get your husband. Doing the little wink wink thing. You know why? Not just to get your husband, but to steal what she thinks is your happiness. When she does not realize that your happiness does not lie in your husband. Your happiness is because of your relationship with God through Jesus Christ and your being obedient to Him. And God blesses that. It's not hard. It's not hard to understand. God blesses obedience. So they are as secret as possible and they put on as far as possible a specious garb, a garb of condor and of equity but its inseparable attendants are of the same odious character with itself namely debates wraths strifes backbitings whisperings swellings, tumults. Have you ever been around people that is, there seems to be every, every time you, you think they got, they think, you think they respect you and like you, but it's, it's always a problem. There's always something that does not go right. Uh, and some of you got people who work for you this way. You need to get rid of them. The envious of you yet you had mercy on them you showed them love and respect and you hide them you heard their sob job story and everything and so you reached out to try to help them as a christian they get in about three months later they are, they are judases they smile in your face they bring you coffee if you're smart you don't drink it because they might have spit in it or did something else you don't you if you don't you don't trust them. It seems like there's always a problem. They seem sneaky. If you're getting all of that right now, you need to get rid of them. Now, if you got a family member like that, you got a problem on your hand because you can't get rid of them. But there's nothing worse outside of the devil than an envious Judas. Who is constantly trying to trip you up. So indeed. It is. Very nearly allied. To murder. Yeah, that's how close. That's how. How, how deep envy is. It's, it's close to murder. For as it is invariably connected. With anger. You remember in Texas, the lady, her friend, her best friend, her ace boon coon, she had a baby. She couldn't have a baby or she didn't have a baby. She lied to her husband that she was pregnant and so forth and, 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 and took the baby from her best friend and tried to act like it was her baby. Now, now, now folks, you see. You say, well, preacher, what makes somebody do something so crazy and so wicked and so stupid? Envy. Do you know there are people who are envious of you because you had uh, ten children or seven children and they could only have one or two? And if they could get away with it, they'll take yours. Envy. close to murder for as it is invariably connected with anger it is murder in embryo what murder in embryo murder in embryo down up in there and it can come forth at any time and hence in the scriptures it is generally associated with murder. 
watch this, the works of the flesh, says the Apostle Paul, are hatred. <coughs> Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. This is in the, this is in the New Testament now. Heresies. The next word is envying. And then comes murders. And in another place he says of unconverted men that they are full of envy. Murder. Debate. These people who like to argue all the time can't be quiet. You got somebody like that in your family? It's going to be rough. And the house stuck with people like this who always want to debate, always want to argue something. The other day somebody killed somebody because uh, they said LeBron was better than somebody, Kobe or whoever. Are you kidding me? Or stabbed him one. I don't know if the person died or not. And we have some black folk like that. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know. The mixture of the bloods, uh, Indians and black and white, and I don't know where it comes from, but there are some Negroes and, and white folks too who love to argue. You know you know some, and that's why you stay away from them. That's why you move to Texas to get away from them. They, uh, they, they, love, they, love, they love to argue about anything. You cannot live in the house with people who want to argue about every little thing and get hot and don't let them have any alcohol in them because some folk black and white get crazy there's some people who should never drink a drop of wine or anything else just drink water that's going to be a problem when you're cooped up in the house with somebody uh, who is envious, love to debate and argue, always got to have the last word. And I'm, and I'm trying to help some of you wives, some of you wives, it's just in you, some of you, some of you. Don't get mad at me, some of you wives, it's just in you to always want to say something back or worse, make a sound. That's even worse, you know. I, well, I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm just, I'm just going. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, right. Mumble something. No, all that is gonna be a problem, okay? Because your husband is not gonna take too much of that disrespect in front of his children running off at the mouth, always got to say something, always got to win. I don't, I don't care if you like it or not. That's why we're in the mess we're in today because the family is out, the Christian family is out of order. Most families are run by the wife and the mother. That's totally out of order. And, and, and you're not just at fault by yourself. Many pastors have taught that foolishness. If mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And now none of y'all can go to church. Because God shut the church down because you have refused to obey God's word. One, one, great, one great preacher, president of a denomination, talking about, uh, you know, we, all we men, we just, just uh, you know, say yes, yes, dear, and all that foolishness. You know, we're all, uh, all, you know, we're all, all of us men are henpecked and controlled by our wives. You know that. The pastor of a major church. And that's the mentality. And that's why your church is shut down. Because God, not only does he want you to preach the whole counsel of God, sir, not just your little happy messages, but he wants you to live the whole counsel of God. He didn't... He didn't write stuff just for you to overlook it. But back to the main point. 
I digress. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, whisperers, backbiters, and so on. It indeed may appear harsh to load this principle with such horrid accusations, but they are true and all verified by experience. Experience, sometimes murderous experience. Wherefore did Cain slay his brother? Why did Cain kill his brother? It was because he saw his brother it was because he saw his brother receiving from God tokens of praise and approbation which were denied to him envy right from the beginning and whence was it that Joseph's brethren took counsel to slay him? Why? It was on account of his enjoying higher favor with his father than they. And that coat of many colors, oh my, coat of many, many colors. And his receiving more remarkable communications from God. They were envious of Joseph. But in truth, we do not view this principle aright unless, unless we see in it the very image of the devil himself. No other principle in the heart of man bears so strong a resemblance of the devil as this sin called envy. So if you're being tempted with envy, you need to run, not walk away from it. See our first parents in paradise, Adam and Eve, as happy as it was possible for creatures in a state of probation, if you will, to be. The devil saw and envied them their bliss, their happiness, walking with God in the cool of the day, naked, and not feeling any shame, naked and unashamed, and never rested till he had robbed them of it. That's what people want to do to your happiness and your joy and your people and they are led and controlled by the devil and you got some in your family you need to know that since you're going to be cooped up with them for days on end and don't invite a whole lot of don't invite anybody else you got enough right there in your household in this case the more is not married Because they all have received your enviable Facebook posts and Instagram posts. Nor does he behold one of their descendants turning to the Lord without using every effort in his power to divert them from their purpose and to destroy their souls. That's the devil for you. He is the master of envy. The devil is envious of you. The devil is envious of us. That's what fuels his hatred. That's why the devil, while you're smiling and grinning, he's doing this. I'm going to get you. <clears throat> and what does he gain by this? Is he himself rendered happier by depriving others of their bliss and of not going to hell? No. He only augments his own guilt and misery. And that's what people 
do. They don't get anything out of it. A little second of satisfaction that you got a frown on your face or a tear fell out your eye, your happy eye. And yet, such is the malignity of his disposition that he can find no employment to his mind but this, to steal your joy with God, to steal your peace with God, to steal your happiness with God and being obedient to God. And so far as he is capable of a momentary mitigation of his pain, he finds it only in robbing man of his happiness, his joy, and his peace, and God of his glory. That's what the devil is about. This is what fuels the devil. He's envious. This is the reason why he was kicked out of heaven. He was envious of God. You got some folks on your ministerial staff who are envious of you. They want, listen to me, they want, they want, they want to be you. They want your wife, they want your children, they want your money, they want your job, they want your suit, they want to be you. They're envious of you. You better watch them. The spirit of Judas is still among us. This is the very character of the envious man. The Bible is full of examples, and the newspapers are too, by the way, that show how deadly envy is. From murderous, murderous acts by humans to the works of the devil himself. This is deeper than what you know. Those that envy the good fortune of others will be continuously angry at them, mad at them, hateful towards them. But you'll never see it until they pounce. So go to God and reject the temptation to corrupt your heart and to join the devil by being envious of others. In closing, Joseph Holbrook wrote, Teach me, O Lord, your way of truth, and from it I will not depart, that I may steadfastly obey. Give me an understanding heart. In your commandments make me walk, for in your law my joy shall be. Give me a heart that loves your will from discontent and envy free. Turn now my eyes from vanity and cause me in your ways to tread. Oh, let your servant prove your word and thus to godly fear be led. Dear friend, if you struggle, with the terrible temptation and sin of envy. I hope you have a better understanding of it tonight. Take this passage to heart and take heed to it the next time you face that awful temptation. And for those of you who don't have this problem, see, if you are a joyful, cheerful, let me back up, if you are an obedient, joyful, cheerful Christian, you need to be aware there are people who want to wipe that smile off your face. They get great joy out of that, great pleasure out of that. And maybe you can recognize some of those tonight, whereas before you didn't see that. But be that as it may, if you're with us tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just got through talking mainly to Christians, but I'm talking to everybody, and especially now. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, as I mentioned to you earlier, John 3.16 states, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shall be saved. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell? Because you're a sinner, just like everybody else. Saved to what? Saved to heaven to be with God, Jesus Christ, the angels, and the saints. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, dear friend, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Believe that he suffered and he bled and he died for your sins. He was buried and he rose on the third day. Basically, when I'm telling you, dear friend, God loved you so much, God died for you. He took your place that you deserve because there's no other place for you to go but to hell if you don't trust Christ as Savior. And God being a just God, he chose to die for our sins. And all we have to do is believe on him. You don't have to join a church. You don't have to be in a church to be saved. Ain't nobody in church tonight in most places around the world. And so you can get, you can get saved right where you are. I got saved in a dorm room in the Air Force. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray with me what is called the sinner's prayer. I'll repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Believing in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is as simple as that. It's not about your religious acts. It's not about getting baptized. It's not about uh, giving money to the church. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus and trust in him and receive him into your heart follow me in prayer holy father God I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ I acknowledge that that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight I have broken your Ten Commandments For I have lied before. I have stolen things before. I've lusted after people and things before. I have uh, dishonored and disobeyed my parents. I have taken your holy name in vain. Lord, that's just ten of your, that's just five of your ten commandments. As you know, I have committed many other sins. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon me. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. He was buried, and he rose again on the third day by your power. Lord, I don't understand it all, but I believe it all. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. I receive you into my life and save my, please save my soul. Even though I don't deserve it, I know that I deserve to go to hell. <coughs> 
please fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins past and help me to turn from my evil life to follow you in the new life Lord Jesus for it is in your name I do pray and for your sake Amen Dear friends of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that, that prayer with me and meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible, you are now saved from hell, and you are on your way uh, to heaven. I can say that very confidently because I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is true. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what the Word of God says. That's, I didn't say that. It's not my word. It's God's word. These are the words of Jesus. So welcome, dear friend, to the family of God. If you believed on Christ, you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you prayed that prayer with me, and you meant it, you're saved. You may not feel anything or not. You may, you may, you might not. I don't know. Everybody has a different reaction. Some people cry. Some people weep. Some people smile like they've never smiled before. Some people don't have a reaction at all, but they're just as saved. It's not about feelings. It's not about emotion. It's not about being perfect. We need to worry about all of that. Just believe on Christ. And so I want to, con to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life. And that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com, our site, and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you, is my prayer. By the grace of God, if God tarries his coming and we live until tomorrow, I'll be here tomorrow night preaching on the second coming of Christ. We thank God for you. Please pray for us as we're praying for you. We have some difficult days ahead. And I want to encourage all of you who know Christ. The next home will be in the eternal burning hell. I know that may be kind of unbelievable to you, but it's true. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. So, uh, you need to understand that. For those of you who are Christians, um, remember you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account. So confess your sins and repent. Change your ways. Stop all of the foolishness in your family. Love your family do your part in your family if you don't you're going to have a very tough time in the house with everybody and uh, by the way don't let everybody just go off to their room be sometime, sometimes you should do that but not all the time uh, y'all pray together in the morning read the word of God in the morning do it at night get back to your devotional time. You're going to need it. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very difficult road for you. This nation is going into a lockdown, and there's no telling how long it will be. So, uh, and witness to other people via the internet.
send out a gospel tract to two or three people. Send out gospel tracts to celebrities. Uh, so pray, uh, read God's word, and minister to other people. God bless you, dear friends, until next time, which, Lord willing, would be tomorrow night. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father, God in heaven, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for what you have done here tonight. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you will do. We give you all of the glory, praise, and honor for all of it is due your name. Prepare us, Lord, for good days and bad days. Prepare us, Lord, for celebrations and tragedies. Prepare us, Lord, for weddings and funerals. Prepare us, Lord, for life and death. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. God bless you. Until next time.